what began as an experiment to bring my 11-year-old daughter into my business has evolved into Our Young Creators, a podcast, a training center, and a movement dedicated to equipping kids with real-world marketable skills so that they can fund their own brighter futures. We're here to inspire you to turn consumption time on devices into creation time and use technology as a tool to bond and not bicker with your kids. Join us each week as we share the inner workings of our partnership and bring you stories from guests of all ages and from all walks of life on our quest to nurture and to celebrate our young creators. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I am so glad you are tuning in live, catching the replay, or listening over on the podcast because you're not going to want to miss out on today's guest. Our amazing guest today is Sherry Dias Malat. She is a recent podcast in a weekend graduate, host of the brand new podcast, Glam State of Mind, and is all about reinventing herself and really just defying the age whatever your number is in age, she's all about breaking down the walls and making sure she's able to reinvent herself as she goes through the different seasons of her life. And we're going to have an amazing conversation about how you can do the same. Sherry, I'm so glad you're here today. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it so much. I've really been looking forward to this today. So good. And I've been looking forward to this as well, because since I've known you, which has only been, I guess, maybe six, eight months, Mm -hmm. I have seen you really reinvent yourself and really say, you know what, I may be X age, but I'm going to do this, even though no one says I can do it, or people are out there saying, what, you're doing that at your age? And I love that you've just said, you know what, no, I gave my life to raising my kids, helping my husband in his career, and now in your 50s, which I love. You are all about having a brand new blog post, having a brand new podcast, and really just continually continually helping people of all ages really just embrace the age they're at and to dive into their lives fully. Yes, um, it's funny because I thought that over the years, I lost. I thought that the time for me was gone. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I went to graduate school for radio TV film. My passion was to write screenplays for the movies. I worked in Hollywood. My first job out of college was actually for a little tiny show, packaging a little tiny show called, I don't know, America's Funniest Home Videos. Have you heard of that? So little. So I started working in Hollywood just a few months before our agency packaged that whole show and it went live in November of 1989. I was a brand new college graduate. I had my whole future ahead of me. I was going to make it big in the movie business, but I never wanted to be on camera. I was like a techie girl. I wanted to be doing the the editing, the videography, the set design. And then I fell in love with writing. I fell in love with working with the writers that we represented. And so I went away to graduate school in Boston. I went to Emerson College to get my Master of Fine Arts in creative writing. And then I fell in love with a dashing naval aviator, a fighter pilot, a test pilot in the United States Navy. And the whole course of my life took a little detour. Amazing. And, and I just I just love this because we have so many similarities because I kind of was the same way. Graduate school had this career path in mind. And then you meet 
the love of your life and things overnight can change. And, and really, I truly believe that everything that happens is meant to happen and come into our path at just the right time. And it sounds like that happened for you. And since you fell in love and you've shifted your careers from raising your babies to now, can you share what you're doing now in your 50s? Yes. Well, actually, I, I spent my 30s raising my babies. I have three kids. And I was like, for the whole decade of my 30s, I was pregnant or nursing or sleep deprived or all of the above. <laughs> it's just a decade that I feel went by in a flash. And then for my 40s, I got lost in a decade of grief. Like I lost one family member after another, after another. And I just thought that was sort of the downhill slope of my life. And somewhere at the beginning of my 50s, I just started trying new things. Like, honestly, I switched makeup. That is the first thing that I did. I was using a really high professional line of cosmetics for 20 years, but I really put no thought into it. And honestly, when I was sleep deprived, I barely took a shower or washed my hair or did anything to put any effort into my appearance, which also affected the way that I felt. You know, how I, how I felt about myself on the outside really was just sort of spinning around and affecting the way that I felt on the inside. And so it wasn't until I was about 50 that I started trying bright colors of lipstick and different colors on my eyes. And, and so I started feeling different. And then I started trying to do live video. I thought, I'm gonna teach other women. You know, I've been in this rut for 20 years I can teach other women how to get out of it. And so I started teaching them how to get out of a makeup rut. And then I thought, well, what about the whole emotional rut, right? So I started teaching women how to get out of an emotional rut. And that has been so powerful. So I started writing, I started sharing my experiences and I can't believe the reception that I'm having from other women going, oh my gosh, you too? I was feeling that too. I feel lost. I don't know who I am anymore. I don't know what my goals are anymore. And so it's been really empower empowering to me and hopefully to other people too, because I think sometimes we don't share the things that are affecting us so much. And those are the things people need to hear, right? That is so true. And I think that for the moms listening and business owners listening, they can totally relate to this because when you become a mom, you're totally in mom mode and that's your that's your, your jam for a while. And then when you are done with that season of your life and you get to the next one, you're thinking, wait, who am I? What do I love? And you just have to keep trying new things. And I love that you, you just took something like makeup and said, you know what? I've been doing this for so long. I'm going to try something else. And then when you did that, and then you got really vulnerable and shared those challenges you were having, people can relate because they're also going through it, but they're not talking about it because in our society, I feel like, especially with moms, it's a bit of a taboo subject. You know, we're supposed to love every moment of it. We're always supposed to be happy. You know, we're never so supposed to be down or, or feel lesser than. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it just happens. And I love that you were brave enough to step out of that and say, "What? you know what? No more. I'm yeah. done. I, I want to experience life fully again. And here's how I'm going to do it. And I'm going to share my journey with you. So thank you for stepping into that space. It's so it's hard. So hard. I come from a long generation of women who put ourselves last. And there's nothing wrong with that, except when you lose a little bit of yourself through that process. And I think as females, we tend to be caregivers. We, we care for our family. We care for our kids. We manage the medical appointments. We manage the household, whatever it is that we manage. And I, I found myself in that role even more so as a military spouse. You know, I followed my husband's career for 20 years because can't really work in Hollywood and follow a military man around the country. It's just not compatible, especially when you, you include the six months and 12 month deployments. I mean, somebody has to be the glue to hold the family together. And so it's very easy to put yourself last and forget that, you know, you need something too. You need to define who you are, who you want to be. What are your goals in life? And honestly, I turned 53 on Black Friday just last week, 
and I am having the best year. I feel so much better than I did in my 40s. I feel like this is my time. This is for me right now. And it feels so good. <laughs> I love oh, it. Happy birthday and congratulations. Oh, yeah. <laughs> been to this place where everything is exciting again. And I can yeah. hear it in your voice. And when I watch you on video, I can see the passion that you have yeah. in helping other women get past those sticking points in their lives and being able to step into a new place where they're redefining themselves. And so you just released something brand new to help women on their journey. Can you talk about this podcast of yours? Well, I started sharing my journey, my walk in life with other women, and I couldn't believe the response that I was getting. And I was getting messages and emails from people and they're saying, Oh my gosh, like, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing this with me. And so I thought, you know, maybe there's a whole group of women, maybe there's, you know, bigger numbers than I even imagine that are feeling the same things as me. So I thought that I would take my stories because I feel like if I share my story, I can demonstrate what I've gone through. And I feel like that's very relatable when someone shares their story. So I'm a storyteller. That is my, that I love to write. I love to tell stories. I come from a long line of storytellers. And so I decided to take the art of storytelling to my new podcast to hopefully make a difference to other women who may be stuck, whether it's an emotional or physical rut, or they've lost themselves because they've put everyone else's needs ahead of theirs. I just want them to know that that's okay you may be stuck, but you don't have to stay there. And I hope that I can inspire other people to sort of break out of that rut. And I had a few tips that helped me that I shared with them. And I, I hope those will help also. I, I think your tips are so spot on as well, because again, you're really pulling back that curtain and saying, you know what, this is my struggle. And if you have this struggle, this is how I got through the struggle to the other side. And here's where I am now. And it's all about this journey of self-discovery and having an open dialogue and open conversation with other women, whether they're military spouses or not, single moms, career women, I think as women, we just don't talk about a lot of these things. So it's so amazing that you have put not only your podcast together, but your blog and your website, so many amazing resources for women to really just sort of step into their greatness again and really say, you know what, this is my time. It's time for me to also do what I love. In addition to raising my kids, I can be all those things. Yes. And so you can share how you balance it all. And I just think that is such a beautiful journey to watch unfold. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. There are three things that when I look back at how, how I found myself again, there are three things that were really pivotal to me. The first thing was doing something new. For me, it was lipstick, but it can be, you know, gardening. I just started gardening again this summer and I've missed gardening for gosh, 15 years. I haven't gardened. I didn't have time. I had other things, whatever life was happening, but I started gardening again, different things that you enjoy, whether it's, you know, they have adult coloring books, there is gardening, there's walking or exercising or reading books, whatever it is that you enjoy, start doing it again. That is the number one thing that started for me. I loved makeup since I was a little girl. So starting to play with makeup again, just sort of brought out the creativity in me. It's sort of my art canvas. It's my way of creative expression. So that was the first thing. Try something that used to bring you happiness before. My second thing that I really found helped me so much was expression, the art of expression, whether it was writing in a journal or posting on Facebook or Instagram or writing letters to people. For me, the written word was so powerful because it was my ideas, a certain date, a certain time on paper or some electronic format. There's even apps. You can journal on apps on your phone when you're sitting waiting for a dental appointment or something and write down having a really bad day. Or you know what? Today I just realized blank. Expressing myself <laughs> helped me so much and it may work for you too. And the third thing, here's a biggie for me, was taking selfies. Now, I hear so many people <laughs> say, oh, she takes selfies, this, that. You know what, I'm 53. 
I don't worry so much about what people think of me because I'm showing up for me and for my family. And here's the thing. I love Snapfish. I upload all of my photos to the Snapfish website. I make calendars every year for family and relatives and everything. I make Christmas cards there. And it dawned on me about three years ago, I was going to make my little calendar. There were no photos of me. I had pictures of my oldest. I had pictures of my youngest. We would go to baseball games and I'd try to get my husband with the three kids and someone else behind me would say, oh, get in the picture. I'll take your photo. And I'd say, oh, no, no, I've got it because I didn't want to be in the photo. I didn't feel good on the inside. I didn't feel like I looked good on the outside. So I didn't take pictures for a chunk of years. And on Facebook, I joined Facebook in 2009. There are hardly any photos of me prior to 2014 for five years. Snapfish makes it really easy to upload your photos from Facebook into your account to make calendars. But if you don't have any photos, those are missing years. And it dawned on me, my kids deserve to have photos of me. My husband deserves to have photos of me, my mom, my sister, my family members. I want photos of them and I know they want photos of me. So I started showing up in photos. I started being present, both mindfully present, but also present in a way that can document, you know, a photo, maybe I'm not having a good day, but I show up in photos anyway, and my kids can see me showing up. And I hope that my youngest child, who is a girl, is absorbing all of these lessons, all of these things that I'm going through, that I'm sharing. I hope that that is all resonating with her, whether she goes through a rut throughout her life or not. I hope that it's making an impact to her and maybe my boys as they bring a female into their life as well. I hope that they realize it and see it through a different perspective also. Um, that's been my walk. That's been my journey. And that's, that's what I recommend to others. So, so good. good. And especially, and especially number three about taking selfies yeah. because my kids still, they giggle. They were like, mom, you can't take good selfies. And why are you doing that? <laughs> and again, it's because I want to document certain things and I want to remember how I felt because as moms, we're so good at taking pictures of our kids and have thousands of pictures of our kids in our camera rolls. But then, yeah, trying to find those pictures of ourselves is pretty much non-existent. So learning to love the journey that you're on and documenting it so you can understand the, the changes that are going to come over time. And especially for you, the positive changes you've made and now having your kids watch you go through this. And for kids, definitely more is caught than taught, I think. Yeah. So being able to model and demonstrate for your kids that loving yourself and taking time for yourself and and really giving yourself space so you can show up as your best self for them is a really important lesson for them yes i actually recently created a free selfie guide seven days to a better selfie and it's so funny because in there i talked about things that you wouldn't think about you know your selfie doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't have to have you know beauty lighting it can be <laughs> I did one with my daughter at a baseball game and I have it in my selfie guide. And it's just, you know, our foreheads and maybe our nose, but it just shows like our foreheads are touching and it shows a tenderness between us and it shows that we were present together. And there's so much more that you can take out of a photo. You can do, okay, I've always been super self-conscious about my eyes. My eyes are not perfectly straight. And so that was a big barrier for me. I would always look at a photo that someone else took and I would think, oh, my eyes are crooked. I'm so embarrassed by that photo. And so through the process of taking more selfies, I learned to get over that. I don't even think about it more. Like I just now had to bring that up to say, you know, we all have things we don't like. We may not like, my teeth have moved. My teeth have moved in the last year because I clenched my teeth. So I probably need braces again, but it's all good because I've figured out ways to take photos so that I feel better about myself, so that I can be present and I can show up for my family who loves me so much. I love that. And when we're finished with this, with this conversation, I would love for you, if you would, to share the link below to grab that selfie guide 
Absolutely. Because now that the holidays are coming up, it's a really good time to start practicing because our phones are out. They're they're ready to take pictures of everything and anything that's happening. So make sure that you are getting pictures of yourself this holiday season. So you can look back and remember where you were and, and have some insight onto your emotions and the journey that you're gonna go on in 2019. I, I think that's a perfect thing to talk about because it is festive. You know, when we go to pick up one of my kids who's out of state at college, we love to go to the shopping center and it's nighttime and the water fountains are lit up and there's, you know, little white twinkle lights hanging above. And we love to get our selfies there because it's festive. There's so many opportunities. Uh, we go and we cut down our own Christmas tree up on the mountain. So we're getting, you know, we're, we're bundled up in our caps and our scarves and we're freezing, you know, but everyone's gonna smile for mom's selfie. <laughs> I love it now because I'm, I'm conditioning my kids to just get over it. My youngest is 14. So <laughs> there's a little bit of stigma with taking a selfie with mom, but we're working through that. We're getting over it. And you know, we are creating some really fun memories of photobombing each other's pictures. Now it's, it's becoming a game. We're sort of moving out of the 14 and into the 15, which is a little more tolerant of mom. <laughs> it's, fun. it's all just a wonderful journey. And again, teaching our kids and modeling for them that using their devices in this way that's positive to capture the memories, to make that documentation for themselves. So years from now, they can look back and say, oh, I remember when I, when mom and I were doing that thing and I was not very happy that day or whatever it was, or we were laughing because of this. Photos have a magical way of transporting us back to that place. And now we can even take that one step further and do videos and, and hear voices and hear tone inflections and all those things. So this is such a great way for parents now to use devices in an intentional way, showing our kids the proper ways to engage with our devices so that we can start becoming storytellers throughout our lives and not have whole sections where we're just skipped in all those photos. I know, I get so disappointed in myself when I look back and I see, I skipped five years. Yeah. And then I think, okay, but maybe I needed to go through that. Maybe that was the journey that I had to go through to be here right now, because I appreciate this so much right now. And I know I'm not gonna do that again. I learned my lesson. So it's all a journey. And as we go through these seasons of life, it's very easy to look back. I wish I had my 40s back. I wish I could do it over. But I'm so much more grateful for this season in my life because I survived the dark <laughs> season. So, so true that it's all about gratitude and appreciating. And even though we wish we might be able to change things in our past. It was those experiences that got us to where we are today. So being able to stand on our own two feet right now and say, you know what, it's day one. Whatever's happened in the past, today's a new day. And I get to reinvent myself and I get to go out there in the world and, and be who I'm meant to be. Amazing. Yes. Yes. It's amazing because I really struggled when I hit 50. I felt like, okay, how much time do I have? What, what's left for me? And now I'm feeling like it doesn't matter. Whatever I have, I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to create things. I'm going to set goals and make goals and shatter goals and create whatever I want to create because I'm not too old. It's really, it's so invigorating. It's so empowering. And I hope that I can just inspire other women to realize that, you know, you're not you haven't missed your, your chance. You haven't missed your shot. Whatever you want, you can still go after it. You just have to find it in yourself to be the person that you need to be for yourself. Hmm. I love that. And I know that there are so many moms, maybe even grandmas watching, who probably feel that, that, you know what, I'm past my prime. I'm just going to sort of ride it out the rest of the way. But really, there's so, if you're alive, there's something to be shared. There's something to be celebrated. So for everyone listening, you heard it from Sherry first. You're never too old to do anything. If there is something that you have been dreaming about doing, go and do it. And if, if you want to reach out to Sherry and, and ask her a question about how she maybe overcame a challenge that you're going through, I'm sure she'd be happy to answer those. You're welcome to reach out to me as well, but I definitely want you to take some action today. 
Think about one thing that you want to do again, and then take the steps you need to take to make that a reality for yourself. Sherry, before we wrap up, I want to find out where people can go and listen to your podcast. Yes, it is at Glam State of Mind, and you can find it on iTunes. Woo! So <laughs> exciting, so exciting. Yeah. Well, Sherry, I want to thank you so much for sharing your tips and your wisdom today about how to really sort of defy age, the number, and be whatever you want to be, no matter what your age is. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm so thrilled to be here. I started live uh, makeup tutorials at 52 and a blog and a podcast at 50. Well, I guess I was 52 also. I mean, who knows what's coming next? <laughs> I, I have no doubt that there are bigger things coming your way because you're someone who decides that you're going to make something happen and then you go and do it. So thank you for being such an inspiration to us all, Sherry. Thank you so much, Yang. I'm so pleased to be here. And thank you all for tuning in. I will catch you on the next episode. Cheers, my friends. If you're ready to harness the power of technology and get your message out into the world in a big way to make the impact you know you're meant to make for yourself, for your business, or with your family, head over to bit.ly slash podcast in a weekend and save your seat in round number three, which kicks off on Friday, November 16th. Save your seat now for podcast in a weekend at bit.ly slash podcast in a weekend. <laughs>